Okay, hello everyone. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure being here. It was a really uh, well-designed presentation, so to say. I hope uh, our will not, not look uh, badly comparing to that. It will be hard to measure up to, uh, uh, to a person that's specializing in design. Uh, okay, so um, hopefully everything works. Yes, we're just trying out some remote control software. That's why I'm holding this device. So uh, we would like to tell you a little bit about uh, the black sheep strategy. I mean, uh, we try to keep it very simple, and we'll try to come up with some uh, practical cases to make it a little bit interesting. And of course, uh, yeah, the black sheep is really black here. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, it's so black that you can hardly see it. But um, uh, I, I, I hope that uh, Zynga, because th that's the black sheep I found on the internet it's from Farmville. I hope they will not sue us for that. Uh, I didn't ask them for the permission. Uh, there's not enough time for it. So um, we actually started with Michal following unconsciously this strategy when we were in high school. So it was the black sheep strategy, and uh, it didn't uh, reflect well in our grades, you know. We were the black sheep of the class. Actually, there were two of us, and, and we are apart from the herd. So um, let's, uh, let's look what, at the What herd. actually result that uh, I, for example, didn't finish high school? <laughs> I mean, you, you did in another way. Yes, so, yes. So. <laughs> I did, but I had to change the class. So, um, so it's not easy what we are going to tell you about. It's, it's not easy. So that's a flock. As you see, it's very nice. It's warm. It's cuddly. You feel safe. Um, actually, we, we changed the Farmville's uh, uh, black sheep as they have only black sheep into white. So um, right now, you will see the, the black sheep. <laughs> you, just, you just see the eyes of it. You just see the eyes of, of, of this, this little sheep. But it means it's, it's, it's really not a very cool place to be in, at least on this slide. So um, how we see that? We, we really see that uh, there are main, two main problems with the herd. Um, let's start uh, with the first one. So um, following the herd is easy. It's, it's very easy for everyone. And uh, what we really see as, as we run business, we are entrepreneurs, uh, it's all about delivering value. With, with the herd, people just follow. So uh, whenever there is a certain solution, uh, they just follow because uh, they'll feel safe. And that's, that's the second thing. It's uh, a you, can, you can see that everywhere on the market. For example, uh, Martin uh, have, uh, has here uh, iPad. And right now, everyone is doing pads on the market, right? And it was very difficult for a first company, in this case, Apple, quite... Uh, uh, quite often being a black sheep, uh, in our opinion, uh, to, to, uh, to invent this device. But now every hardware manufacturer is doing some kind of pad. So that, that is pretty easy to follow uh, the one who sent the trend. Yeah, that's, 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 <clears throat> that's really funny because, I mean, in our 15 years of business, we were talking to a lot of experts, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of analytics, uh, a lot of, so to say, knowledgeable people but they just follow the trend. So in our opinion, they follow the herd. Uh, when something is set in stone, there is a standard, industry standards, uh, a certain way of making certain things. The most convenient way is just to follow because uh, it's easy and uh, you feel safe. Uh, if you work in a, in a big company, if you will not uh, cross the line, you'll most probably not be fired, you'll be safe. Yeah, until the company runs into some big trouble and then do massive firing, but that's another story. It's visible in very big companies uh, where people are afraid to take decisions. If they go the way everyone else is going, they are safe. Nobody can accuse them that they are doing something wrong way so, because so again, they are doing the way everyone else is doing. So again, if you, if you look at the herd, it's, it's a really nice place to be in. It's, it's warm and safe. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we are asking, uh, you, you want to ask you, you a question, if you dare to be different, I mean, uh, we think that, I mean, first of all, it's a way of life, and uh, there is a big reward. I mean, whatever you do, it can be business, it, it, it can be just, uh, you know, things in life. If you do different Being in high school. Yeah, yeah, being in high school, it's kind of cool, you know, people like you, <laughs> because you don't really care, but actually you do because, you know, you have to change the school, but it gets all complicated, so. So, um, as we are entrepreneurs in, in business, there is a big reward because if you don't take the risk, if you don't try to, to come up with something that really delivers the value, and 
we, what is important to stress here is you have to be, try to be different for a reason. We, we are not talking about rebels without the cause. You know, the, the high school example taught us a lesson, you know. We we're just, just rebels and, uh, yeah. Uh, we, were, we were penalized for it. It, it. it didn't really make such a big sense, but, but in business it does. It, it does. If you have a cool uh, idea, you, you have to go against the hard gaze. You, you have to go against uh, certain, certain trends we are really, which are set in stone, and it's really hard to break through them. So uh, it's important. It's not to be different for a sake of being different, just like that. So let's move to, uh, to the next slide. And, and that's actually a, a practical example. Black sheep makes a computer game. So uh, on the left, uh, we have the flock, uh, or the herd. On the right, we have the very black sheep. And uh, that's an example uh, of the game, our first game we've developed, uh, The Witcher. So at the time of uh, 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 when we started uh, the process, uh, the main trend were the gaming consoles. So Everybody who was, who was talking to us was saying, hey, I mean, you have to make a console game. You have to make a console game or it will not make money. You will, you will go bust with the company. Then the second trend, where if you don't want to make a console game, you have to make an MMO. So it's a massive multiplayer online game like World of Warcraft. At a certain point in time, almost everybody in the world were, were, was doing World of Warcraft clone. That's a very flockish approach, I would say. And, uh, and there is no reward at the end, yeah. yeah. A, lot we... of, a lot of these guys really went bust, uh, and, and, and that was happening uh, during, during the crisis and, and a little bit afterwards. So when we started development of The, of the Witcher, uh, somebody counted that uh, there were 200 projects, um, MMO projects uh, started in the world. So everyone was doing MMO, because analytics, consultant, everyone was advising that that's the future of gaming. I still remember the reports we were getting from, from big publishers, and the reports were saying, like, I mean, make a console MMO, that would be the best, and then really <laughs> kick ass, and you would rule, you know? And, and make sure that it appeals to everyone. So then you have all the market in the world, and, and you will make a lot of money. So what we did, uh, we did a PC game, a dying platform. So PC computers versus consoles, I mean, the retail having its problems. We don't have enough time to elaborate, but yeah, it, it was tough, it was like, uh, like a, like a sentence, uh, that sentence almost. And then we did single player, because we wanted to tell a story, the story of, uh, uh, of an iconic hero or girl, the monster slayer. And then uh, we designed it for a specific audience, mature audience. So uh, the whole plot, the whole story was written in a, in a way that mature audience would, uh, would enjoy it and, and would find it witty, would find it intelligent. I don't want to say that other games are not intelligent, but if you're making a game designed for all, which is getting a, a, an R rating or 12 rating in the US, I mean, it, it has to be pretty flat in many places or you'll not get this rating, so you'll not appeal to this group. And one of the hardest part of making this game was not actually making the game itself, was to sell this game to publisher. Because we were approaching different companies and they were selling, uh, asking us questions. That was like standard set from all representatives of publishers. And what about the multiplayer mode? And we're like, uh, we are telling the story, you know, it doesn't fit in this kind of game. So we decided to make a single player. And people looked at us like, uh, are we crazy or something? And the other question was, do you plan plan it for consoles, and we were like, no, no, we would like to focus on PC. No, but, but and, no, then, and then it was the end of the, the best story. One, the best one. We are coming with a story it based on, on Andrzej Sapkowski's books. It's, it's defined. It makes sense. It's a believable world. Millions of people read the book, and so on and on. I mean, we, we, we just didn't come up with it. And, and they're asking us the question, could the main protagonist be a female, maybe a dwarf? <laughs> How about that? And we say, yeah, you know, we could tweak it a little bit. Maybe we could fit the story, so let's take another time. But uh, that's, that's really, yeah. the, people come up with, with this kind of ideas because it, it comes out of, 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 of certain um, market surveys. Uh, th this female character is kind of a company story. It's, uh, very, uh, it's, uh, it's told from person to person because that was actually the, the fact that one of the representatives came from second meeting and uh, told us that they made the research and gamers would love to play the female character. And could we change the Witcher Geralt from the Sapkowski book into elvish woman? Because that was something which was supposed to be expected we from are, gamers. We, 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 we are already running 10 minutes and we are... Halfway there, so um, okay. let, let's end here. So, um, what was the result? Just, 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 just very briefly. So, 
the, the flock was saying, work, working in a dying genre on a dying platform. That's pretty much the verdict. And we sold 1.5 million units worldwide and received over 100 awards. Why? Because... Simply because the game was different, it was appealing to a certain audience, and it was true. We delivered what we wanted to deliver, and, and, and not some you know, mass market uh, blah blah pulp, which you really hate, by the way. Uh, and by the way, I mean, the game was good too, you know? That's, that's kind of important. That's important concept, too, yeah. You know? So um, the, the next example is uh, Black Sheep does digital distribution, so direct delivery of games. We are gamers, we're running a gaming company, and um, again, you have the flock, and you have the very black sheep uh, on the right. And uh, what, what was the flock doing and saying? So only new games. Digital distribution is basically a concept of downloading the game directly to your computer and playing it in one way or another without the necessity of going to a retailer to a store and buying the game. So basically video on demand, but in a gaming world. Uh, so only new games. High price points because you know new games are expensive, so that's the best market. Uh, if it's high price point and you have a certain share of the revenue, you'll get obviously high revenue. Uh, the region restrictions. So um, the platforms were usually originated in Western Europe and US, and quite often you were not able, being a Polish customer, Thai customer, Russian customer, whatever that was really outside of uh, US and Western Europe, you were not able to buy the games because, for example, you didn't have the license for a given territory. It works pretty similar, like you, we know from, for example, from iTunes, uh, you cannot buy many things. Or actually, with, it doesn't uh, work. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, you cannot buy many things which U.S. customers can and, buy. And finally, different prices for different regions. So uh, in U.S., the game was $50. In Europe, it was 50 euro. Kind of unfair, of course, depending on the period of time. And, and the last thing, which is very important, you're in protection. So you download the game, uh, and it's protected. You have to be online to play it, although it's single player. It just makes your life really difficult and cumbersome. If you're traveling with a laptop, you cannot play the game. And uh, what do we come up with? PC classics. Why? A few reasons. Because uh, we found it a perfect niche. We had experience in it in, in our Eastern European markets and our retail brick and mortar activity. And also, uh, the big battle of the big guys was happening in the new games. So why, why enter there and, and you know, fight, fight with the big guys? Then we introduced lower price points. So, uh, Six to the five to ten dollars, pretty much. Uh, no restrictions and one price for, for all. Yeah, different customers. I, I lost on this presentation. Yeah. Um, so uh, no regional restrictions. Actually, I was very proud that we had some customers from Cambodia. Uh, we are still uh, looking from some customers from Somalia. I think you know, in a few years, we'll get one or two. Um, and 100% DRM free. So you download it and you have a feeling of ownership. Although it's a license, it's a, it's a real feeling of ownership. You own the game, you can back it up, you can install it on your notebook and whatnot. The last point is quite important because most of the companies are afraid to give the file to the end customer because they all imagine that the customer will start copying it uh, endlessly and broadcasting in the internet. So I mean, the difference. Yeah, let's be blunt, steal it. The customer will steal it, you know? <laughs> and, and they can go at any gentle. time to the torrent sites and download any of the new games for free, totally for free. And quite often, because the pirated games are cracked so they have no protection, the functionality for the user is better. So th this is a really sick concept. And uh, what is the result? So GOG, because that's the platform we are talking about, started two years ago. Uh, so that's actually the youngest digital distribution platform from uh, top digital distribution platforms right now working in the world. And basically we showed here five biggest digital distribution platform. The first one, the biggest is Steam Powered. They were first on the market and they are leader. That's no, that, that is no that's doubt. The, that's the Pioneer Premium. So if you are different and if you're a pioneer, you really rock the world. And other ones uh, are the followers. And GOG, our GOG is the blue one. Uh, we just recently, a few weeks ago, uh, came for the position of number one, as you can see. And it's what is important. For example, the one which we overcome uh, here, the uh, yellow one. Uh, yeah. It's direct to drive. That's the platform which is connected with the biggest, uh, one of the biggest gaming uh, 
magazines, websites in the world. So they have a very big uh, leverage from the fact they are connected with the magazine, kind of online yeah, there's, magazine. Yeah, there's 15 minutes out there. Okay. It sounds kind of scary. We have still 25 slides more to go, so <laughs> give us a moment. Uh, Blackship makes PR, and, and uh, that, that, that's about the platform, that's about what we did recently. So um, a lot of people when we are talking to, to, uh, uh, about signing deals for our digital distribution platform, they're asking, so what's your marketing spend? And we say, well, we don't spend on marketing. And I'm like, oh, hmm, kind of strange, you know, because everybody spends on marketing and it really works. Uh, but we, we have a different approach. We really think that PR builds uh, more value. This is the way we've, uh, we've handled the Witcher, and this is the same way we've approached GOG. So what we did, uh, we planned a big relaunch, uh, getting out of beta, because the site was uh, two years running in beta. Uh, we planned to announce the new version, come up with new features. We signed a really exceptional content, great RPG games, and wanted, wanted to use this opportunity to, to, to boost the traffic, and, uh, to boost the traffic and, and get more customers going. So what we did, uh, uh, we decided to shut the site down. I mean, some of you are, are probably dealing with internet business. If there's no site, it's kind of scary because that's your only connection to the end customer. Um, we shut it down. We posted a really lame-looking screen with the text that, you know, that, that there were too many challenges and certain era has ended and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we thought it's, it's, it's very, very straightforward, a true hint for the people that, hey, you know, it's a game. You know, we'll reopen. <laughs> we're just having fun here. A lot of people didn't get it this way. Uh, we, we had to say a big sorry afterwards. But one thing happened in the, in the social media-driven world and the mass market uh, TV and, 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 and internet stations, we are covered in every single biggest uh, gaming place in the world as a top story. GOG went bankrupt. They closed. <laughs> Why they closed? And you know, all the different theories. We really love that. Um, of course, we were really scared at the same time. Uh, <laughs> changing the diapers, yes, so to say. Uh, so we planted, we, we, we thought we planted some hits on the shutdown page. Some people thought we didn't. Uh, uh, we are, of course, uh, trying to manage it somehow. Uh, and uh, we are posting hints via Twitter and Facebook. And then on, this, on the second day of the closure, we posted the trailer, which was already showing something. Hey, you know, it's a glimpse. There is something coming. Some people still didn't get that. And then... Um, and then we hosted a um, we hosted a very unusual <laughs> peer conference. Uh, <laughs> so we, we we told everybody that uh, uh, that on Wednesday we'll host an unusual peer conference. Uh, uh, that the management will have an official statement, management official statement. I like these words. And so we we, we appeared. I'm the guy on the left, actually. Uh, uh, dressed as monks, and we asked people from re for redemption. We had also a couple of videos about that. Uh, we have to be going, so... Um, just just short just note, the for the press conference, we had uh, more than 600 uh, journalists from all over the world checking what's going on in GOG. So, huge uh, number okay, of journalists. So, so, as you see, uh, the, the, it, was after the, it was on the 23rd, so we picked, and uh, the, the, the final message to deliver, guys, I mean, dare to be different. Uh, we believe there's a lot of value and there's, there's a lot of great things to come up with. So uh, we're begging you, dare to be different. Thank you. Thank you very much.